So let's talk about why I don't think I'm looking to get married or wishing to get married. I'm a 29 year old Muslim woman that is Arab uh, and I'm also a doctor. I work full time. I've gone to school for a large chunk of my life. So maybe I haven't had as much experience with dating or relationships, but I definitely have realized over the years that I don't really know if I actually am interested in marriage, at least not in the way that I've seen it in my life so far. When he the first thing I would say to someone who's saying they are not sure if they are even interested in marriage because for Muslims, for my non-Muslim audience who follow and watch me, the only way we can have a relationship as Muslims is through marriage, okay? So even this whole concept of dating is a foreign concept to us, really. We either get married or you stay celibate. So it is weird, to say the least, when a man or a woman says, I don't know if I ever want to get married. What they are essentially saying to you is, I don't know if I ever want to be in a relationship. I don't know if I ever want to experience physical intimacy. I don't know if I ever want to experience love. It's weird. It's not normal. There's something wrong. Now, we're going to get further into the video because there are other issues for us to unpack. But let's just let's hear what she has to say first. When people ask me, what are you looking for in a marriage? What are you looking for in a guy, etc.? I always kind of blank and have no idea what to say because I haven't really thought it through very much and maybe I haven't actually seriously considered it. And I think it's because I haven't seen a single marriage in my life where I feel that there is an equitable division of labor and roles. And that's not to say that the individuals in those marriages feel like... See, this is where societal conditioning has warped the impressions or the understanding of what marriage should be like, an equitable division of labor and roles. I think what she's implying here is, for example, she comes, she looks Syrian. I think she's Syrian. She's Shamiya to say the least, but she, she looks Shamiya, but I think she's Syrian. And what I would imagine she's referring to is she has seen, for example, the women do all the cooking and cleaning whilst the men go work and then come home and relax. And I'm, I, can only, I can only guess here because we don't have any context. I can only guess that she finds this to be a problem because she's been raised in America. And as is the case in the Western world, we are force fed this idea that we need to go down the middle with everything. Well, you know, on the one hand, these women, they want men to go down the middle with them with the labor side, an equitable division of labor. But how about an equitable division then of the household bills? Are you willing to go down the middle there as well? Because most women who vomit this narrative are not. They, on the one hand, want you to be a traditional husband, whilst on the other hand, she remains a non-traditional wife. Now, the fact that she is a doctor further complicates and makes it difficult for her to get married. As you guys know, I've mentioned in the past that the research is clear on this and Jordan Peterson has cited it over and over again. The more educated a woman becomes, the less likely it is that she will ever marry. Again, the more educated a woman becomes, the less likely it is that she will ever get married. Why? Well, because of hypergamy. If you're a doctor, you're in the top 1.4% of the population. 1.4% of British men or less have a PhD or a doctor of some sort. That means as a woman now, if you are looking for someone who is a minimum doctor as well, which would be the normal case for what most women who are doctors, they are looking for men on their level, if not better, then you are, you are fishing in a pool where there are only 1.4% of all men in the population there to begin with. Now you have to consider, what do those 1.4% of men want? Not to mention that 1.4% doesn't, it includes the married men, it includes the gay men, it includes the men that you're not attracted to, and it, and, it, and it includes the old men. So we're probably talking about 0.14%. So this to me is a classic case of sour grapes, which is I haven't found the type of man that I want. Therefore, I'm going to pretend and tell the world that I never actually wanted him in the first place. And this is the ultimate power move to disdain the things you cannot have. Instead of moaning and groaning about it, just simply say, you never wanted it in the first place. Let's continue. But it's not equitable either. They might feel like it's very fair and equitable, but I'm just speaking for myself and what I would want in marriage. So when you don't have an example of something that you want for yourself, it's really hard to envision being 
married. <laughs> Talking about this for me is really difficult because I am Muslim and for Muslims, marriage is this huge topic of conversation and it's so important and I know that it is a very honorable part of a Muslim's life, but I just think that we put way too much pressure and stress and value on marriage. Because it's one of the most important decisions you will ever make in your life, ever. For starters, it's half your deen, half your religion. So that pressure and stress is warranted. You see, one of the ironies and paradoxes of living in a comfortable society is that women in particular now are less, there is less motivation for them to get married because back in the day a woman did not get married because she wanted to a woman did not necessarily get married because she was looking for happiness and love a woman got married because her damn life depended on it and it probably is still the case in this sister's home country of syria right now there was none of this talk of happiness and equitable labor and all of these fluffy you know pc terms didn't exist it was i need to get married because my life depends on it and one of the paradoxes of living in a comfortable society is that the more comfortable and developed that society becomes the less of a need there is for women to get married so now she as a woman as a doctor in particular is looking at the landscape and she's thinking i live a very comfortable life i'm a doctor and as of yet the me the type of man that i want he has not shown interest in me. And I say that very specifically because if the type of, assuming that this sister is not asexual or gay, okay, I'm assuming that she's straight. Assuming that she is straight, well then, if the type of man that she wants also wanted her, she would be married. But she's not, which means the type of man that she is looking for is in one of two camps. Either he's not interested in her or he doesn't exist in the first place because of this fanciful idea of what many women have in their minds of what a man should be like. And there's often many contradictions uh, in that definition. That's why you just generally speaking, you don't ask a woman what she wants. She just doesn't know. I mean, she said it herself in the beginning of the video. I don't know what I want. That's why you don't ask them in the first place. And she's a doctor on top of that. So now, as I mentioned before, the, the more educated a woman becomes, the research is clear on this. This is not a, some type of misogynistic statement. No, the research is, is clear. The more educated a woman becomes, the less likely it is she will ever get married because of her. Because she is not willing to settle. And then at the same time, while she becomes more educated, okay, she progresses further up the career ladder, she also gets older. And this is an unsavory reality for many women. This sister, she's, she's 29 years old and she looks around her age, you know. She can't compete with the 19, 20, 21 year old versions of herself. Oh, but they're, they're young and they're immature and they're not as experienced as me. Your experience is a vice, not a virtue. A woman's experience is a vice, not a virtue. It usually it results in her becoming more complicated. She is more complicated, she is less reasonable and she is more difficult to lead. Younger women are better across the, po the board, point blank period as for your education that's for you we don't care about it it doesn't add any value to us it's for you so long as you have a base level of education you're not a retard you can read and write and con conduct yourself in a normal civil conversation that's good enough for us anything above and beyond that that's for you that doesn't enhance your marriage prospects or your dating prospect prospects actually it hurts them because you yourself will not consider a man who is lower on the social status totem pole than you are. In Islam, today. And I think that that's cultural and that's not religious at all. As a woman, I feel like we are expected to sacrifice a lot of things about our lives and basically sort of like mesh into a man's life perfectly and all he has to do is basically just have this person enter their life and kind of become a part of their world so that's correct 
and you can see why this is an issue for her because she has invested and this is where the sunk cost fallacy comes in now she has invested such a large portion of her life energy and effort into becoming the professional that she has become a doctor that she feels like i can't give that all up i just had a friend just the other day visit a sister for the purpose of marriage went to his family's house and this sister is a doctor and they're around the same age they're in their mid to late 20s both of them and she said to him what are your views on me working because i work as a doctor and oftentimes that requires me to come home or to to work shifts whereby i'm not home in the evening i'll, I'll be out all night long and he was he said it was talking in the car with him yesterday he said to me you know that's a problem for me man like this this gentleman he's not rp aware or anything like this but in his innate nature he felt it to be a problem he felt it to be like, it's like and his response was i don't want to come home and the house is empty and my wife's not there that's I, i'm not i'm not feeling that so then on the flip side to that these women have invested such a large portion of their life into this version of themselves that they have be become that they refuse to or they are extremely reluctant to give it up for the sake of a man and become a just a housewife which is one of the most if not the most important role a woman could ever take on because she is the school she is the the home she is the children's first child first tutor and teacher but of course the role of the housewife has been massively underplayed and women today have quite literally become the men that they are attracted to they mistakenly believe, and this is why you hear a lot of women say, oh man, I'm a boss babe. Oh man, men are intimidated by me. And they think that's a flex. Why? Because women are attracted to boss men. Women are attracted to men that intimidate them. Yes, there is a low level of intimidation that they feel towards men that they are attracted to. She's attracted to him, but she's a little bit scared of him. She's attracted to that. And many of these women have made themselves into the very man that they are attracted to, mistakenly believing that we are attracted to the same thing. Nothing could be further from the truth. A man being attracted to a boss babe or to intimidating women is like a woman being attracted to a man who has a hobby for collecting lipsticks and wearing high heels. For men, it's a lot easier to get married, in my opinion, because women are often the ones that sort of change their life in order to fit into the man's life, and the man kind of just has this like extra perk into his life. I can't ever find myself doing that. And because she has become the man that she is attracted to, or she was attracted to, that's why she finds it so hard to be able to do that. Younger woman, on the other hand, would be much more easy. Would much more easily adapt to this role. Hence why I say across the board, if you're looking at a conventional marriage, a full-time conventional marriage, younger women across the board are just superior choices to older women. Even in this, there's not much difference between 21 and 29 from an age perspective, but from a perspective of malleability, there's an enormous difference. I also can't find myself in a situation where there would be inequity in the sacrifices, compromises, and in the work, the labor especially. It is overwhelming. For me to admit that even though it's actually also relieving for me because i genuinely don't envision marriage being a very positive thing in my life right now because i have such a positive life and people might think like oh she's probably miserable you know she's single and she's not married and all the pressure and all the judgment but i love my life and i've cultivated a beautiful place for myself and i've worked so hard to get to where i am today with no there you go. I've worked so hard to get to where I am today. But the sunk cost fallacy kicks in, which is, <sighs> I've worked so hard to get here. I refuse to give it up without getting something massively more beneficial in return. Like, I can't be settling for no basic brother. He's got to be a superstar or I'm just not going to have anyone. So that's exactly what sunk cost fallacy is. You go to the casino, you've got £100. You spend £90, you lose £90. The wise thing to do is to leave the casino and spend the last £10 on Donna and chips. But you say to yourself, you know what? I spent 90 quid here. I'd rather lose it all than walk away with 10 quid. Because what if that 10 quid could have gotten me all my money back? You spend the last £10, you walk away with nothing anyway. That sunk cost fallacy at work. This is exactly what's at work here right now as well. No man's help. <laughs> and I just think that women who are... With no man's help, mashallah, what about your father, sister? 
your father didn't help you become the woman that you are today? Hmm? are actually happier than women who are married. Why would I do something that makes me... Single women are actually happier than women who are married. Okay, let's address that statement. Once again, the facts will fly in the face of this statement. The most depressed demographic of women in America today, the most depressed demographic of women, are women who are in their mid-40s, who earn over $100,000 a year, and whom are childless. That's the most depressed demographic of women. And it's difficult for a younger woman, such as this sister here, who's in her late 20s, to be able to appreciate the entire scope of her life from the vantage point at which she's at right now. Maybe right now, whilst you're living in a comfortable home, and you have a comfortable salary, and you're just comfortable. See, comfort is a killer. Comfort, it's, it's pain that moves people to take action. Hence why I said to you before that women would get married back in the day, not because she wanted to, but because her life depended on it. Pain pushes people into action. But when you're comfortable and you're sedated in that comfort, you're less likely to want to take action. But the most depressed demographic of women are women who are earning over 100K in their mid-40s and childless. And it's difficult to appreciate that whilst you're younger. But the thing is, Here's the thing to the younger sisters watching, and it's you that I'm talking to. I couldn't care less about this sister, okay? For all intents and purposes, she looks like a lost cause. But I am taking this video for you younger sisters who are watching right now. And that is, remember this, miserable women want company. Miserable women want other women to be miserable with them. Lonely women need company from other lonely women. And you will see women peddling this lie, and it's a lie, that they're happy and content. And maybe this woman is content right now. Maybe she is because she's still relatively young. Give her another 10 years and come back to me and let me know what you, what you think. When the attention that she is currently receiving from men dries up and men start looking at her younger peers and she's starting to get older and start the loneliness is starting to really hurt her. Can you imagine your life at the age of 60 and you don't have any children or grandchildren to share your money and your wealth with that you have accrued? What's the point? What was the point in climbing the career ladder and becoming as, as successful as you have become only for you to then have nobody to share it with? And for those feminists who say it's selfish to want to have children just because you're lonely, I say to you, no, you are the selfish one to not want to have children to share your wealth with. And you know this. You know it's because you're selfish, because you enjoy me, me, me time. And this is the irony and paradox of living in a comfortable, developed society. There is no longer an incentive or an urge, a motivation, a driving force to have to marry. Now it's a nice to have and you can see why population size is dwindling in the west massively uh, elon musk's main primary concern for the perpetuation of the species for the for for humanity itself his number one concern before ai artificial intelligence is depopulation why do you think my man's got eight kids and counting that's his number one concern depopulation i think right now the the uh, average children per household in America is 1.4. You need a minimum of 2.1 to continue the species. Is that 1.4? It's a collapsing society. It's a collapsing population. It's on the verge of population collapse. It's serious. They're less happy. Uh, that makes them do more labor, and that another person benefits from while I don't benefit from it. And that. Hajib, amazing, her view of marriage is that it will make her less happy whilst another person benefits from it whilst she doesn't get any benefit. Almost as though marriage is a chore. Well, let's put the man to the side. How about the benefit of children? Because this is one thing that all normal women, and I use that word very carefully, all mentally, normally functioning, uh, psychologically well-functioning women want children, all of them. And even Jordan Peterson has mentioned that any woman who does not want a child, there is something fundamentally 
not right in her mind. There's a few screws loose because it goes against her nature. For a woman to not want to have children, there's a few screws loose. And that's why you will see a lot of these women who don't want to get married, a lot of them will still have children. And in fact, one of the comments in this video here, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. The woman says, and the comments are what are most disturbing, by the way. They are what are most disturbing to me. And I'm going to go through that in a second. But she says something along the lines of, I'm so glad you said something like this. Um, I, I, I don't want to get married, but I still want to have children, though. Like it's the ultimate oxymoron. The ultimate oxymoron. And as Muslims, you can't have IVF just like that with some next random dude sperm. You can't do that. It don't work like that. But the comments are very concerning. This is why I've taken this video here. If you see the ladies' responses, Muslim women's responses, marriage should be a choice, not an obligation. I'm turning 48 and unmarried and I am happy, no regrets. Lie. Absolute lie. These women are crying themselves to sleep late at night. Crying themselves to sleep. And their, one of their greatest existential fears is that their younger sisters and cousins and friends do get married. You know why? Why do you think women like this make statements like that? I'm happy, no regrets, 48, not married. Because she needs, she's recruiting. She's recruiting players to the team of lonely spinsters. So can, we can at least be lonely and miserable together because misery loves company. Remember that to the young sisters watching. They are recruiting you. They need you to believe in their lie that they are happier because they are on a recruitment drive. They don't want to be miserable and alone. They'd rather be miserable with company. Miserable nonetheless, but with company at least. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Did I miss something? What do you think? What's your view on this? You know, by 2030, 45% of all women between the ages of 25 to 44 will be single and childless, according to Morgan Stanley. They are preparing an entire economy to benefit from your spinsterhood. Like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you want to book a consultation with me, you can find the links are all in the description. You can email me from there. And I'll catch you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.